Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the second of the second month on our Creator's calendar, which happens to line up with the 15th of April on 2023 on the Gregorian calendar. And before we continue with our reading and study of Hanok, we're going to be going over what's called the exhortation from the Damascus document and the Dead Sea Scrolls. It was also in the Geniza A and B manuscript, which was some scrolls, medieval era scrolls that were found in Geniza, Egypt. They found these part of this Damascus document that was also found in Qumran with the Dead Sea Scrolls later on. And they had, had found an Aramaic um, Testament of Louis or Levi in Geniza as well. But the Damascus document, <clears throat> the first part of it is called the Exhortation. And I want to read a little bit of the introduction here from a new translation, page 51. And then the fragments from the scrolls that I don't have on the post that we're going to be reading. So it says, <clears throat> excuse me, only fragments remain of the opening paragraphs of the Damascus document. The translation that follows is pieced together from... 4Q266 and 4Q268. Enough can be recovered to tell that several of the themes of the entire work are foreshadowed in the introductory paragraphs. The necessity of obedience to Elohim, the perfidity of the wicked, the insight of the pious into the future, the importance of observing the proper times of worship, the special revelation given to the children of light. And then it also says this portion probably comes from the secretary and reworking of the document, but that's a, an erroneous opinion to try to delude people. The mention of the children of light is in scripture in the, in the renewed covenant as well. Just one moment. Okay, so this first part, excuse me, this first portion that I'm reading is from the paperback, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, A New Translation by Michael Wise, Martin Abeg Jr., and Edward Cook. So I don't have this part that's in fragments on the, on the post that we're going to be covering, and I'm just going to read it from the text here. Anytime there's a break in the text, it will show a bracket with three dots. And when it does that, I'll just say break and keep reading. But when I do say that, I want you to keep in mind, again, the break could be just a word or two, or it might only be part of a word that's missing, or it could be lines of text that we just don't have anymore. It's not, it's, you can't tell by looking at the three dots in brackets on the page here. In the study edition and in other places, especially online, when you look at the scrolls, you can actually see what was missing and how much, but you don't have that when you're just looking at this book. So I'm going to say break when we get to those parts and just continue to read just for continuity's sake, okay? <clears throat> and this first part, this is the beginning of the exhortation, as it's called, and it's from 4Q266, fragment one. It starts with broken text. This is the children of light to avoid the ways of evil. It breaks off twice until the time appointed for punishment is past. Breaks off twice. Elohim saw all her deeds that they brought all, breaks off twice, to the boundary shifters, and all of it will be done in the era of wickedness. The boundary shifters were the Pharisees. It's another title for them that's mentioned. They're explained elsewhere in the books. I believe it's in the Peshars or the commentaries, as they call them, of the different foretellers. This is, listen to me, for now I shall make known to you, break, the awesome break, his wonderful miracles I shall relate to you, hidden from mankind, break, Shemaim, or heavens, who lives break, in the deepest break, he has sealed double break, and it, it goes through lines 10 through 13 that are missing here. 
in the commandments break, in the offering break, and they did not obey the voice of Moshe break. They went about spreading lies about his laws, and from Elohim's covenant they strayed break, both small and great break. Please tell us about your ways break, your conversation break. You appeared and comprehended, break. They shall restore the break, and I am dust and ashes. All right, it breaks off. It says, give heed, breaks off again. And it says, the latter generations, for surely they will come to pass, double break. What is its beginning and what its ending, double break. Before it comes upon them, double break, for it is not permitted to celebrate their holidays too early or too late. Now, it says holidays here in English, but that would be the Moedim, or appointed times in the Hebrew. It says, yes, periods of Elohim's wrath are decreed for a people who know him not, and he has established times of favor for those who seek his commandments and to those who live perfectly in the proper way. Blamelessly is tamim, tau mem, right? Tam is the, the root for that. He uncovered their eyes to the hidden things and opened their ears that they might comprehend or that they might hear deep things and comprehend future events before they happen to them. And now we'll get on to the text that you can read together. Just one moment. So here's the rest of the exhortation from that same book that I just transferred over and then edited. It says the exhortation from the Damascus document. And this is right after we just read what we finished it. And immediately after it says, hearken now all you who know righteousness, and consider the works of Elohim. For he has a dispute with all flesh and will condemn all those who despise him. For when they were untrustworthy and forsook him, he hid his face from Yisrael and his dwelling place and delivered them up to the sword. And remember, hiding his face is them not knowing the truth. Because he is truth. But remembering the covenant of the forefathers, he left a remnant to Yisrael and did not deliver it up to be destroyed. And in the age of wrath, 390 years after he had given them into the hand of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, he visited them, and he caused a plant root to spring up from Yisrael and Aharon to inherit his land and to prosper on the tob things of his earth. And that would have been the return of Yahuda and Ezra, who was of the, the children of Aharon there, right? And they perceived their inequity and recognized that they were guilty men. Yet for 20 years, they were like blind men groping for the way. And if you remember in 4th Ezra, after his return to the land, they sought him in his counsel for all things, and he went out to go fast periodically following the will of our maker, received increasing revelations, and he was eventually told that he was going to be taken to paradise to await the consummations of the times and not to see death. But before he went, he was allowed and enabled through the Ruach to dictate to five scribes to write down and copy all the books of the Torah that had been destroyed. So they were groping like blind men for the way because they didn't have his word. It says, And Elohim observed their deeds that they sought him with all heart, and he raised for them a teacher of righteousness to guide them in the way of his heart. And he made known to the latter generations that which Elohim had done to the latter generation, the congregation of traitors, to those who departed from the way. This was the time which, of which it is written, Like a stubborn heifer, thus was Yisrael stubborn. Hosea 4.16 
When the scoffer arose who shed over Yisrael the waters of lies, he caused them to wander in a pathless wilderness, laying low the everlasting heights, abolishing the ways of righteousness, and removing the boundary with which the forefathers had marked out their inheritance. That he might call down on them the curses of his covenant and deliver them up to the avenging sword of the covenant. Okay. To remove the boundaries which the forefathers established brings a curse. To not follow all the words of this Torah to do it brings a curse. Right? These things were happening to them because they were being subjected to the, the punishments that are in, enumerated in Devarim or Deuteronomy 26 or 28 uh, and Leviticus or Waikra 26, if I remember correctly. It says, For they sought smooth things and preferred illusions. Yeshayahu 30.10 And they watched for breaks. Yeshayahu 30.13 And chose the fair neck. And they declared right the wicked and condemned the righteous. And they transgressed the covenant and violated the precept. They banded together against the life of the righteous. Psalm is that 94 21 and loathed all who walked in perfection they pursued them with the sword and exulted in the strife of the people and the anger of elohim was kindled against their congregation so that he ravaged all their multitude and their deeds were defilement before him hearken now it means hear attentively with the intention of doing, right? Like Shema, hear, believe, and do. And this hearken actually is an old English word that came from the Hebrew word to bend the ear in to listen, right? But hearken now, all you who enter the covenant, and I will unstop your ears concerning the ways of the wicked. Elohim loves knowledge. Chokma, wisdom, and comprehension he has set before him, and wisdom or prudence and knowledge serve him. Patience and much forgiveness are with him towards those who turn from transgression, but power, might, and great flaming wrath by the hand of all the messengers of destruction towards those who depart from the way and abhor the precept. They shall have no remnant or survivor. For from the beginning Elohim chose them not. He knew their deeds before ever they were created, and he hated their generations. And he hid his face from the land until they were consumed. For he knew the years of their coming and the length and exact duration of their times for all ages to come and throughout eternity. He knew the happenings of their times throughout all the everlasting years. And in all of them, he raised for himself men called by name, that a remnant might be left to the land, and that the face of the land might be filled with their seed. And he made known to his set apart, or sorry, he made known his Kodesh Ruach, or set apart Ruach, to them by the hand of his anointed ones or Mashiachim, right? And he proclaimed the truth, but those whom he hated he led astray. Hearken now, my sons, and I will uncover your ears that you may see and comprehend the works of Elohim, that you may choose that which pleases him and reject that which he hates that you may walk perfectly in all his ways and not follow after thoughts of the guilty inclination and after eyes of lust. For through them great men have gone astray, and mighty heroes have stumbled from former times till now. Because they walked in the stubbornness of their heart, the Shemaim watchers fell, which is what we just read in chapters 10 through 16 of the book of Hanok, or what they call First Enoch. It's also mentioned in Genesis chapter 6, and again in the book of Yobelim, I believe it's 
starting in chapter 10. It might be a little bit before then. I think chapter 10 is when their children as demons or disembodied spirits were starting to lead the sons of Noah astray. But it is mentioned in the book of Yobelim as well. It's also mentioned in the Dead Sea Scrolls in a variety of places. The Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs talk about it. It's literally throughout the entirety of the writings. You can find allusions and direct mention of the, the Shemaim watchers mating with women and the giants that came from them. Three levels of them, what we would call titans and then their offspring, right? Uh, just for context sake, but in reality, there were messengers that chose to di not keep their proper order, and they're continually suffering, even to this day, the punishment that they deserved by our Creator. But that's why that's never going to happen again. This is because they walked in the stubbornness of their heart, the Shemaim watchers fell. They were caught because they did not keep the commandments of Elohim. And their sons also fell, who were tall as cedar trees and whose bodies were like mountains. All flesh on dry land perished. They were as though they had never been, because they did their own will and did not keep the commandment of their Maker, so that His wrath was kindled against them. Through it the children of Noah went astray, together with their kin, and were cut off. Remember, after the death of Noah, all his children stopped keeping the feast and they turned from obedience and they started doing things that they weren't supposed to. Abraham did not walk in it, and he was accounted a friend of El, because he kept the commandments of Elohim and did not choose his own will. And he handed them down to Yitzhak <clears throat> and Yaakov, who kept them and were recorded as friends of Elohim and party to the covenant forever. The children of Yaakov strayed through them and were punished in accordance with their error. And their sons in Mitzrayim walked in the stubbornness of their hearts, conspiring against the commandments of Elohim and each of them doing that which seemed right in his own eyes. They ate blood, and he cut off their males in the wilderness. And at Kadesh he said to them, Go up and possess the land. Deuteronomy 9.23 But they chose their own will and did not heed the voice of their Maker, the commands of their Teacher, but murmured in their tents, and the anger of Elohim was kindled against their congregation. <clears throat> through it their sons perished, and through it their kings were cut off. Through it their mighty heroes perished, and through it their land was ravaged. Through it, meaning disobedience, right? Through it the first members of the covenant sinned and were delivered up to the sword because they forsook the covenant of Elohim and chose their own will and walked in the stubbornness of their hearts, each of them doing his own will. And this is why, as we just read in the exhortation, or not that, I'm sorry, in the two ruachot that rule over a man and in the two ways from the apostolic constitutions, also what's mentioned in the Shepherd of Hermas, the Epistles of Barnabas, the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs, uh, this theme, right? They, uh, uh, I completely forgot what I was going to say with that. I'm sorry. So anyways, I, I forgot what I was going to say with that. But this theme of the two Ruach Oath that rule over a man. It, it, oh, there we go. It mentions having self-will is a negative or a demonic influence. It's a work of the flesh to be self-confident. And you can see right here that doing your own will and walking in the stubbornness of your heart is synonymous. So being self-confident and thinking that you're right when you really, we ought to be humble and meek. We ought to fear before the tremble, before the words that we've heard is what scripture tells us to do. Because he's a righteous judge that isn't impartial right? <clears throat> but
But it says, Yet with the remnant which held fast to the commandments of Elohim, he made his covenant with Yisrael forever, revealing to them the hidden things in which all Yisrael had gone astray. He unfolded before them his Kodesh Sabbaths and his esteemed feasts, the testimonies of his righteousness and the ways of his truth, and the desires of his will which a man must do in order to live. And they dug a well rich in water, and he who despises it shall not live. Now, this is talking about in Numbers when they were digging the well, right? And they used the sticks to dig. It's going to have an explanation for that. I believe it might be in here. Or it could have been in one of the Peshars, the commentaries, where it's mentioning that and it's alluding to the, the stick is the law and the well they dug. I believe it's later on in here. But it's very significant when you think about the concept that we've talked about before, how everything is parables. And what the patriarchs walk out is a parable of a future event, something that's going to happen with the children later on, on a larger scale. So that this is another example of that, where you could read it here shortly. Yet they wallowed in the sin of man and in the ways of uncleanness, and they said, this is ours. But Elohim in his wonderful mysteries forgave them their sin and pardoned their wickedness. And he built them a sure house in Yisrael, whose like has never existed from former times till now. It, he's built a sure house that doesn't exist yet, right? The building not made with hands or the habitations that we have as our reward where he went to go build dwelling places and or mansions for us, as it says in certain translations, right? Those who hold fast to it are destined to live forever, and all the esteem of Adam shall be theirs. As Elohim ordained for them by the hand of the foreteller, Yechezkiel, saying the Kohanim, the Luiim, and the sons of Zadok who kept the charge of my Hekel, or temple, when the children of Yisrael strayed from me, they shall offer me fat and blood. Yechezkiel or Ezekiel, this is at 44, 15. The Kohanim are the converts of Yisrael who departed from the land of Yahuda, and the Luiim, or it says, and those who joined them. This part right here is added. I don't know why they do that. The sons of Zadok are the elect of Yisrael, the men called by name who shall stand at the end of days. Behold the exact list of their names to their generations, and the time when they lived, and the number of their trials, and the years of their sojourn, and the exact list of their deeds. And then it breaks off. It says, these were the men of Kodeshah whom Elohim, or set apartness, whom Elohim forgave, and who declared right the righteous and condemned the wicked. And until the age is completed, according to the number of those years, all who enter after them shall do according to that interpretation of the law in which the first were instructed. According to the covenant which Elohim made with the forefathers, forgiving their sins, so shall he forgive their sins also. But when the age is completed, according to the number of those years, there shall be no more joining to the house of Yahuda, but each man shall stand on his watchtower. The wall is built, the boundary far removed. Micah 7.2 now, this has to do with the fall of the Yahuda in the land and everyone being the renewed covenant believers being throughout the world, right? And a foreshadow of when they were taken out by Babylon and spread out with the rest of the children that were over there at that time in their migrations. For those that don't know for sure, in the 700s BC, the Assyrian nation took out the northern kingdom and dispersed it. And within a hundred years or so, the Assyrians were themselves taken out. But 
for a few hundred years until the 500s, the middle of the 500s BC, Babylon took out the southern kingdom or the kingdom of Yahuda. A remnant of them returned, but most of the people stayed in dispersion and spread out from there. So this is during all those years, Belial, this is Belial, which is the Greek word for Belial, but it literally means without worth or worthlessness, and it's a title for Satan, just like Satan is a title for Satan. Mestima from the book of Yobelim, Samael, the poison of El, these are all titles for the same individual, right? During all those years, Belial shall be unleashed against Yisrael. As he spoke by the hand of Yeshayahu, or Isaiah, son of Amos, saying, Terror and the pit and a snare are upon you, inhabitant of the land. Yeshayahu 24, 17. Interpreted, these are the three nets of worthlessness which, with which Louis the son of Jacob said that he catches Yisrael by setting them up as three kinds of righteousness. So these are the three things that he trips up the children with. The first is fornication, the second is riches, and the third is profanation of the temple. Profaning his dwelling place, which was the physical when it was there, and it's our bodies now. And it was always the body of a man to begin with, but the, the one represented the other. Whoever escapes the first is caught in the second, and whoever delivers himself from the second is caught in the third. Yeshayahu 24.18 The builders of the wall, Yechezkiel or Ezekiel 13.10, who have followed after precept, precept was a spouter of whom it is written, they shall surely spout. Micah 2.6 shall be caught in fornication twice by taking a second wife while the first is alive. Whereas the principle of creation is, male and female created he them. Genesis 1.27 Also those who entered the ark went in two by two. And concerning the prince it is written, he shall not multiply wives to himself. Deuteronomy 17 17. But Dawid had not read the sealed book of the law, which was in the Ark of the Covenant, for it was not opened in Yisrael from the death of Eleazar and Yahushua and the elders who worshipped Ashtaroth. It was hidden and not revealed until the coming of Zadok, and Zadok was not the Kohen until the reign of Shalomo which is why Dawid, see, and the deeds of Dawid rose up except for the murder of Oriyahu, or Oriyah, and Elohim left them to him. That's what Shaul means, the emissary Shaul, when he says, when there is no Torah, there is no sin. Before, or when it cannot be known, it's not held against you. You still suffer the consequences of, of choices that are not his will, and you can see that having multiple not wives for anyone in the history of the scripture never ended well. It always had problems in regard to it. <clears throat> Moreover, they profane the temple because they do not observe the distinction between clean and unclean in accordance with the law, but lie with a woman who sees her bloody discharge. And each man marries the daughter of his brother or sister. Whereas Moshe said, You shall not approach your mother's sister. She is your mother's near kin. Waikra or Leviticus 17.13 But although the laws against incest, or incest are written for men, they also apply to women. This is the meaning of the scripture. It says there, were, there is no male and female, but all are one in Mishiach Yahushua. It, the law I, is equally applicable for man and women. All right. 
before there was more of a distinction, it was only the men that were required to do certain things, right? There is no enjoining for men only um, in anything other than what you're allowed to serve as that I'm aware of. But that, that's a different thing for another time. It says, when therefore a brother's daughter uncovers the nakedness of her father's brother, she is near kin. Furthermore, they defile their Kodesh Ruach and open their mouth with a blaspheming tongue against the laws of the covenant of Elohim, saying they are not sure. They speak abominations concerning them. They are all kindlers of fire and lighters of brands. Yeshayahu or Isaiah 1 and 11. Their webs are spiders' webs and their eggs are vipers' eggs. Yeshayahu 59.5 No man that approaches them shall be free from guilt. The more he does so, the guiltier shall he be, unless he is pressed. For in ancient times Elohim visited their deeds, and his anger was kindled against their works. For it is a people of no discernment. Yeshayahu 27.2 It is a nation void of counsel inasmuch as there is no discernment in them. Deuteronomy 32, 28. And discernment, just like any of these other gifts of the Ruach, Chokmah, or wisdom, Bina, or comprehension, what we call understanding, Etza, counsel, uh, what is that, Gabora, might, and you have uh, Da'at, knowledge, as well as discernment of Ruach. These are all gifts that you have to get from asking him and study, staying in his word. If you go over everything and you memorize in your heart and being everything that he says about the two spirits or the two Ruach that rule over a man, so that it's ingrained in your, in your very essence what is of him and what is of the enemy, <clears throat> then you can never be led astray on whose influence you're feeling if you happen to have joy in your heart or anger, right? If you have the idea of envy crop up, you'd know exactly where it's from. And people get those ones, but there's nuances that are overlooked. However, when you stay in his word, he gives you, he imparts himself to you. And our Mashiach is the Chokmah of Elohim, who is the word from the Father, right? And his words that he speaks are Ruach, and life. <clears throat> this is for in ancient times Moshe and Aaron or Aharon arose by the hand of the Prince of Lights, which is a title that we first see in the visions of Amram, the father of Moshe and Aaron, the son of Kohath, the son of Louis or Levi, right? But he has he sees the Prince of Lights and the Prince of Darkness and the King of Righteousness or Melchizedek and Malkirasha, the King of Evil, fighting over him. But it says, For in ancient times Moshe and Aharon arose by the hand of the Prince of Lights, and Belial, in his cunning, raised up Janus and his brother, when Yisrael was first delivered. And Janus and Jambres is the English uh, Anglicized names of the two magicians that were in Egypt, or Mitzrayim, right? And at the time of the desolation of the land, there arose removers of the bound, who led Yisrael astray, and the land was ravaged because they preached rebellion against the commandments of Elohim, given by the hand of Moshe and of his set-apart anointed ones. Be and because they foretold lies to turn Yisrael away from following Elohim. But Elohim remembered the covenant with the forefathers, and he raised from Aharon men of discernment, and from Yisrael men of Chokmah, and he caused them to hearken, or Shema, to hear, believe, and do. And they dug a well, the well which the princes dug, which the nobles of the people delved with a stab. Numbers 21.18 The well is the law. And this is the interpretation of the parable 
of what they walked out and how it was accomplished later on. The well is the law, and those who dug it were the converts of Yisrael who went out of the land of, of Yahudah to sojourn in the land of Damascus. If you remember Shaul breathing out lies and threats, or he got papers or authority from the Kohanim to go to Damascus to uproot the followers of the way, right? For context here. These were people who fled beforehand, and more than likely it was sometime around the advent. Uh, there's a lot of people that have a lot of ideas about things that are not true, especially in regard to the times of the Maccabees, or they think the Maccabees themselves, the Maccabean or the Hasmonean dynasty was a criminal thing when it wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't approved by our creator. They're actually given alkalades in the apostolic constitutions and spoken well of. They had prayers answered. They overcome multitudes of enemies. None of that stuff would have been possible if he didn't allow it to be. So, but the times in which the Kohanim and the, the Kahuna, the priesthood, if you will, became corrupted is when Herod first removed the rightful heir of Aaron that was in place there and put his own son of Aaron uh, of a different line in charge. And that was not contested by the others. That was not to be done. There was no rules for it. And then the monarch was over and over again because the, the kahuna was going apostate. If you remember in the Testament of Yahuda. He said that the kahuna or the kohanim would be over the the kings unless they were apostate and then the, the monarchy would have dominion over them. And that's kind of what was starting to happen. Not only did Herod, but then later on the Romans would pick who would be serving at, at times in the kahuna, although they did keep it within the sons of Aaron or Aharon. But that's neither here nor there. It was usually around that era where you had people leaving, where they would not work in the Hekel anymore. They would not do the things with the wicked. They separated themselves and lived in the wilderness, which is what the uh, scholars and people would call the Essenes today, but that's not really the name they ever used for themselves. So back on track, it says, The well is the law. And those who dug it were the converts of Yisrael who went out of the land of Yahudah to sojourn in the land of Damascus. Elohim called them all princes because they sought him, and their renown was undisputed or was sorry, and their renown was disputed by no man. The stav is the interpreter of the law, of whom Yeshayahu said, He makes a tool for his work. Yeshayahu forty four or fifty four sixteen. And the nobles of the people are those who come to dig the well with the staves, with which the stav ordained that they should walk in all the age of wickedness. And without them they shall find nothing, until he comes who shall teach righteousness at the end of days. So unless you take the law and you go in the appropriate way that the interpreter gave, which our Mishyak established with the constitutions there, the people who do it are the nobles, right? And that's what we're supposed to walk in during the age of wickedness, which we're, we're still living in, the times of his punishment, the bowls of wrath being poured out, right? And without them, they shall find nothing until he comes who shall teach righteousness at the end of days. None of those brought into the covenant shall enter the temple to light his altar in vain. They shall bar the door, for as much as Elohim said, Who among you will bar its door? And you shall not light my altar in vain. Malachi 1.10 And this is what I meant. A lot of the Kohanim went off and left into the wilderness. They wouldn't serve anymore. And that's what a great deal of the Dead Sea Scrolls, what they call the community rule and this, the Damascus document, were their laws or bylaws, their constitution, if you will, for how to keep covenant outside of the land. That's why if you read through this and then you read through the apostolic constitutions, there's a great many parallels in what was going on. Because the apostolic constitutions is just the fullness 
of what was originally established here. They shall take care to act according to the exact interpretation of the law during the age of wickedness. They shall separate from the sons of the pit and shall keep away from the unclean riches of wickedness acquired by vow or anathema or from the temple treasure. They shall not rob the poor of his people to make of widows their prey and of the fatherless their victim. Yeshayahu 10.2 Orphans and widows, right? Who gets abused the most in Satan's mockery of religion? They shall distinguish between clean and unclean and shall proclaim the difference between set apart and profane. They shall keep the Sabbath day or yom according to its exact interpretation and the feasts and the yom of fasting according to the finding of the members of the new covenant in the land of Damascus. They shall set aside the set-apart things according to the exact teaching concerning them. They shall love each man his brother as himself. They shall succor the poor, meaning providing comfort, right? The poor, the needy, and the stranger. A man shall seek his brother's well-being and shall not sin against his near kin. They shall keep from fornication according to the statute. They shall rebuke each man his brother according to the commandment, and shall bear nor rancor from one day to the next. Meaning, if your brother has, if you have something, you know, if you have something against your brother, you go to him and you make it known. You, re, it says in Waikra that you re, reprove your brother for certain and hold no sin against there and hold no grudge against him, right? You don't let bitterness well up because you don't address the issue. Both for yourself and for them, right? So they shall rebuke each man his brother according to the commandment and shall bear no rancor from one day to the next. They shall keep apart from every uncleanness according to the statutes relating to each one. And no man shall defile his set-apart ruach since Elohim has set them apart. For all who walk in these in perfect set-apartness, according to all the teaching of Elohim, the covenant of Elohim shall be an assurance that they shall live for thousands of generations. As it is written, keeping the covenant and favor for those who love me and keep my commandments to a thousand generations. Deuteronomy 7.9 and if they live in camps according to the rule of the land, as it was from ancient times, marrying according to the custom of the law and begetting children, they shall walk according to the law and according to the statute concerning binding vows, according to the rule of the law, which says, between a man and his wife, and between a father and his son. Numbers 30.17 now, the, if you're not familiar with this, this is whenever, and it's not just your son, but it's your daughter as well. Whenever a man hears his wife make a vow or hears his son or daughter make a vow or make a claim or promise to do something, you have it in your power to veto or to allow it. And you can allow it with silence or you can agree to it overtly. But if you were to change it after that, you'd be guilty of the sin. If you were to annul it when it happens, then they they don't have to do it and there's no harm done because you've canceled that. It's your authority and, and privilege to do so. But it's also your, your responsibility to void foolish vows and to not let them get in trouble with the words of their mouth because it'll come back on you. Right? That's enumerated in Numbers chapter 30, verse 17 and elsewhere. I think it's the whole chapter or a larger section of that chapter goes into it. But as it applies to a father and his daughter, so it applies to a man over his wife and over his children, both his son until he's of age and his daughter until she's married. And when you're a widow, you're now culpable for your own actions and thoughts and words. You, you don't have a man to veto it. You have to abide by them. Okay. 
And all those who despise the commandments and the statutes shall be rewarded with the retribution of the wicked when Elohim shall visit the land. When the saying shall come to pass which is written among the words of the foreteller Yeshayahu son of Amotz, he will bring upon you and, abroad, and upon your people and upon your father's house days such as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Yahuda. Yeshayahu 7.17 When the two houses of Yisrael were divided, Ephraim departed from Yahuda, and all the apostates were given up to the sword. But those who held fast escaped to the land of the north. As Elohim said, I will exile the tabernacle of your king and the bases of your statues from my tent to Damascus. Amos 5, 26 and 27. Now, when the northern and, kingdom, northern and southern kingdoms split, they dwelled together for about 300 years before the northern kingdom was taken into captivity, as it was just mentioned here. All the apostates were given up to the sword, meaning they were killed or enslaved, and they were mistreated and abused by the Assyrians, who, if... I don't know if you've ever done any studies on them, but they were like the inquisitors of before the Inquisition, right? They did some pretty bad things to people to terrorize the nations into compliance and capitulation. But those that repented, right? Those that held fast and repented, as it mentions in 4th Ezra and is mentioned by the Roman or Greek historian Herodotus, the Scythians, or the half the, the tribe of Manasseh, the, the ones that repented, they went north to Arsareth, right? The Euphrates was held back for them, like it was with the Yarden and, and the uh, Red Sea. And they went there to dwell in the land that no man inhabited, to keep the law that they would not keep in their own land. And they became known as the, the Sakai or the Saxons, and, the, and they were known by the Greeks as the Scythians or Scythians, which spread out and became the Germanic peoples, the Ostrogoths, and others, right? But eventually, and that was the whole horde of them moving in, the ones that stayed in captivity in the land went to places like Bactria, Parthia. They were in Persia, Medai, and I, what we call Iran today, right? Just for some context. Eventually, they came to power there with the Parthian Empire that was like Ephraim's nation and company of nations, while Manasseh in the north was a great nation. That was a type and shadow of what would come later on as well. Just for context of what was talked about, and you can see that it's mentioned right here, the ones that held fast went to the north, which is also mentioned in 4th Ezra. And there's witness in secular history, like I mentioned in Herodotus's uh, history. <clears throat> Excuse me. As Elohim said, I will exile the tabernacle of your king and the bases of your statues from my tent to Damascus, right? The books of the law are the tabernacle of the king. There's a lot to that, but if you know our king is our Mashiach and he's the word, he's the Torah and the Torah giver, that, that applies even more. As Elohim said, I will raise up the tabernacle of Dawid, which has fallen, Amos 9.2. The king is the congregation. The people are sovereign. We are his body, right? And the basis of the statues are the books of the foretellers, Hussein's Yisrael despised. The star is the interpreter of the law who shall come to Damascus, as it is written, or to the cup of blood, right? As it is written, a star shall come forth out of Yaakov, and a scepter shall arise out of Yisrael, or Yisrael, Numbers 24, 17. The scepter is the prince of the whole congregation, which is our Mashiach, right? And when he comes, he shall smite all the children of Seth, or all the children appointed, which is everyone alive today. If you remember, Adam had... Cain, and then Havel, or Abel. Cain killed Abel, and he had Seth in appointment or placed set 
in his place instead. And all the children of Seth were from the sons of Noach and down. All the children of Cain died in the flood. At the time of the former visitation, they were delivered, whereas the apostates were given up to the sword. And so shall it be for all the members of his covenant who do not hold steadfastly to these, to the curse of the precepts. They shall be visited for destruction by the hand of Belial. That shall be the day when Elohim will visit, as he said, the princes of Yahudah have become like those who remove the bound. Wrath shall be poured upon them. Hosea, or Hushea, 5.10 For they shall hope for healing, but he will crush them. And remember how they came. They were looking for deliverance from the Romans and what happened. They had what happened, what they did to another, what happened to them, Right? They are all of them rebels, for they have not turned from the way of traitors, but have wallowed in the ways of whoredom and wicked wealth. They have taken revenge and borne malice, every man against his brother, and every man has hated his fellow, and every man has sinned against his near kin, and has approached for unchastity, and has acted arrogantly for the sake of riches and gain. And every man has done that which seemed right in his eyes and has chosen the stubbornness of his heart. They have not kept apart from the people and their sin, and they have willfully rebelled by walking in the ways of the wicked of whom Elohim said, Their wine is the venom of serpents, the cruel poison of asps. Deuteronomy 32.33 The sea monsters are dragons, are the kings of the peoples, and their wine is their ways. Remember, Yahuda was going to be in the testament of Yahuda. He mentions how his children would be like sea monsters in the sea, or dragons in the sea over the people, and his children are the kings of the earth. And the head of Asps is the chief of the kings of Greece, who came and wreaked vengeance upon them. But all these things, the builders of the wall, and those who daub it with plaster, Yechezkiel or Ezekiel 13.10, have not comprehended. Because a follower of the wind, one who raised storms and rained down lies, had preached to them, Micah 2.11, against all of whose assembly the anger of Elohim was kindled. So, the people don't comprehend because they're being preached lies by others. And as for that which Moshe said, you enter to possess these nations not because of your righteousness or the uprightness of your hearts, Deuteronomy 9.5, but because Elohim loved your fathers and kept the oath, Deuteronomy 7.8, Thus shall it be when the converts of Yisrael who depart from the way of the people, because Elohim loved the first who testified in his favor, so will he love those who come after them, for the covenant of the fathers is theirs. Yet he hated the builders of the wall, and his anger was kindled against them and against all those who followed them. And so it shall be for all who reject the commandments of Elohim and abandon them for the stubbornness of their hearts. This is the word which Yirmiyahu spoke to Baruch the son of Nariah, or Nariyahu, and Elisha spoke to his servant Gehazi. None of the men who enter the new covenant in the land of Damascus and who again betray it and depart from the fountain of living waters shall be reckoned with the counsel of the people or inscribed in its book from the day of the gathering in of the teacher of the community until the coming of the Mashiach out of Aharon and Yisrael. Now, this has been used by scholars to say that our Mashiach, there's multiple Mashiachim, or there's two messiahs that were going to be coming that they were promoting. 
But if you you can look all the way back in the testaments of the patriarchs and the book of Yobelim, and they make very clear that our Mashiach was to come through the line of Yahuda and Louis from the king and the Kohen line. And Aharon married the sister of um, Nachshon, the leader of the tribe of Yahuda, and they they intermarried. You find this intermarriage between the, the, the sons of Louis and Yahuda quite a bit, not only in the common scriptures, but in extra scriptural writings or histories that cover their people, like the ancient history of Caledonia, when they got to their promised land, which became well, they landed at Montrose or Mantrojan, Montrose of Scotland, it didn't originally have a name. And then they were called the Caledonians after they got the belief in our Mashiach by Saint Chaldean. But aside from that, or Kadoshi Chaldean, as soon as they got into the land, the the leader of the people from Yahuda married the daughter of the leader or the son of the leader of the, the people of Yahuda married the daughter of the son of Louis and vice versa so that they intermarried their families. And that happened regularly. You can see that happening in history. You can see it happening even at the time like the Maccabees were able to be kings because they had intermarried with Yahuda. You can find that in, in the world as well where not everyone is a direct descendant of Yahuda, but they're intermarried into it that hold the monarchy. When you get to the common scriptures, you find that Miriam, the virgin mother of our Mashiach, was of the line of Dawid directly. And her cousin, Elisheba, or Elizabeth, some say it was her aunt, but I think it was her cousin. We have to look at that better. The point is, her very close family relation was of the, the daughters of Aharon, or of the, the children of Aaron, if you will. So that... That connection it was there, and it is mentioned in Scripture. And this is, And thus shall it be for every man who enters the congregation of men of perfect kodeshah, or set-apartness, but faints in performing the duties of the upright. He is a man who has melted in the furnace, Yechezkiel 22.22, when his deeds are revealed... Excuse me, I have to leave. I wish you all a good day. Sorry, but I got to go. No, no problem, brother. Shalom. Sorry about that. I'll start right here again. It says, The men of knowledge... Or, no, I wasn't there to begin with. It says, And thus shall it be for every man who enters the congregation of men of perfect Kodeshah, but faints in performing the duties of the upright. He is a man who has melted in the furnace, Yechezkiel or Ezekiel 22.22. When his deeds are revealed, he shall be expelled from the congregation, as though his lot had never fallen among the taught ones of Elohim. The men of knowledge shall rebuke him in accordance with his sin against the time when he shall stand before the assembly of the men of perfect set-apartness. But when his deeds are revealed according to the interpretation of the law in which the men of perfect Kodeshah walk, let no man defer to him with regard to money or work, for all the Kodeshim of the Most High have cursed him. And thus shall it be for all among the first and the last who reject the precepts, who set idols upon their hearts and walk in the stubbornness of their hearts, and this is where it says that there is no more forgiveness, but a fearful expectation of judgment for those who have come to knowledge of the truth, partaken of the Ruach, been immersed and did all those things, and then turn away again, right? They shall have no share in the house of the law. They shall be judged in the same manner as their companions were judged, who deserted to the scoffer. For they have spoken wrongly against the precepts of righteousness, and have despised the covenant and the pact, the new covenant, which they made in the land of Damascus. Neither they nor their kin shall have any part in the house of the law. For from the day of the gathering in of the teacher of the community, until the end of all the men of war who deserted to the liar, 
there shall pass about 40 years, which was what happened when our Mashiach died, rose and gave his instructions and ascended. They had about 40 years from 30 AD to 70 AD when it was destroyed. Deuteronomy 2.14 And during that age, the wrath of Elohim shall be kindled against Yisrael. As he said, there shall be no king, no prince, no judge, no man to rebuke with righteousness. Hosea or Husha 3.4 But those who turn from the sin of Yaakov, who keep the covenant of Elohim, shall then speak each man to his fellow, to declare right each man his brother, that their step may take the way of Elohim. And Elohim will heed their words and will hearken, and a book of reminder shall be written before him of them that fear Elohim and worship his name, against the time when deliverance and righteousness shall be revealed to them that fear Elohim. And they shall distinguish, and then shall you distinguish once more between the righteous and the wicked, between ones that serve Elohim and ones that serve him not. Malachi 3.18 And this was also what was alluded to in the shepherd of Hermas in his parables, where he had the parable of the trees in winter, and everything looked like it was desolate. And this was like believers and the righteous in this life, in this age. And then the summer, when the fruitful trees were blooming and the dead trees were dead, and you can see the distinction, was equated to the age to come. It says, And he will show loving kindness to thousands, to them that love him and watch for him for a thousand generations. Exodus or Shemot 26. And every member of the house of separation who went out of the Kodesh city and leaned on Elohim at the time when Yisrael sinned and defiled the temple, but returned again to the way of the people in small matters, shall be judged according to his Ruach in the council of Kodeshah. Remember, everyone gets judged by the Ruach in them in the time of his visitation. And that's enumerated in that writing that we had read, uh, I think it was the week before last. Not the exhortation, but the two Ruach oath from the community rule, which we read. Right, This is the exhortation, sorry about that. But it says, But returned again to the people, to the way of the people in small matters, shall be judged according to his Ruach in the council of Kodeshah. But when the Elohim of esteem is made manifest to Yisrael, all those members of the covenant who have breached the bound of the law shall be cut off from the midst of the camp. And with them all those who condemned Yahudah in the day of its trials. There's a lot of people who do that today, who, who condemn Yahudah and say some really bad things that they ought not. But they don't. They don't fear and they don't really believe. But he said to Yahudah, cursed is he who curses you and Baruch is he who blesses you or Barak you, right? It doesn't go away. There's no statute of limitations on that. So the same thing with Louis, the same thing with all 12 sons of Yaakov and their forefathers and ancestors. I mean, speaking evil about anyone is a bad idea. It says, yet all those who hold fast to these precepts, going and coming in accordance with the Torah or law, who heed the voice of the teacher and confess before Elohim, saying, Amen, we have sinned, we and our fathers, by walking counter to the precepts of the covenant. Your judgments upon us are right ruling and truth who do not lift their hand against his Kodesh precepts or his righteous statutes or his true testimonies. Okay? Do not lift up your hand against his set-apart precepts, his righteous statutes, or his true testimonies. Who have learned from their former judgments by which the members of the community were judged, who have listened to the voice of the teacher of righteousness which is our Mashiach, 
and have not despised the precepts of righteousness when they heard them. They shall rejoice, and their hearts shall be strong, and they shall prevail over all the sons of the earth. Elohim will forgive them, and they shall see his deliverance because they took refuge in his Kodesh name, or his set-apart name. This is the name of Yahuwah is a strong tower. I will go in it and seek refuge, right? There's there's so much about his name, the literal, what his name means, what it's all about. That's the whole study for a different time. But thank you all for your time. You have a wonderful rest of your Shabbat and we'll, a great week ahead and we'll see you next time.